Good morning. I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about the term Bolton analysis. Uh, this term is, is used in orthodontics to help uh, put some uh, perspective on whether or not the, uh, the difference between the upper and lower arch fit within uh, a certain standard deviation of the population. It's a, it's a fairly complex term to understand. Uh, Invisalign has simplified it. <clears throat> Uh, so if you look at the Bolton analysis tool here, you're going to get this readout here. But before we take a look at that, <clears throat> let's take a look at the, <clears throat> the Bolton analysis and, and what led to uh, its importance. Uh, so I'm going to bounce between a couple different uh, pages here. Uh, so it was first uh, described by Wayne Bolton in 1958, uh, publishing a paper, and uh, it's been used uh, as part of an uh, orthodontic analysis, uh, if we take a look at what's actually being measured, there's two different ratios. The first one is the total tooth width of all of the anterior six teeth. Uh, that's called the anterior ratio. It's not the arch length. It's the arch length if the teeth are in proper positions, but many times when you're doing this analysis, there is a decreased arch length, therefore the arch length would not correspond to the, <clears throat> the total width of all of the teeth. So as you can see here, some of the mandibular six anterior teeth sitting on top of the sum of the lower six anterior teeth times 100, and you get 77.2%. Uh, this number, was measured in a Caucasian population. Uh, and as far as I know, this has not been tested on other ethnicities. Uh, so you have to take that into account if you're doing the analysis on a non-Caucasian population. Uh, I don't necessarily have any experience in, in doing that. To be honest, when you start doing clin checks, the information that you get from this <clears throat> becomes obvious just by looking at the case. Uh, but there are times that you can glean some information that's helpful. Uh, but it is a tool in treatment planning. <clears throat> so coming back to the two ratios, the first one is the anterior ratio. Uh, the second is called the, well, I guess there's three. I apologize. Yeah, it's called the overall ratio. So it's the sum of the uh, total tooth width from first molar to first molar that number comes out to 91.3%. <clears throat> In the paper, uh, I believe he talked about standard deviations away from that average, uh, which complicated it. And the purpose of today is not to go down that rabbit hole, but instead thank Invisalign for simplifying it. <clears throat> and what they do is they express it in millimeters. So if you read the papers, uh, that refer back to the Bolton analysis, you'll often see things reported uh, based upon its relevance to a standard deviation. We're two standard deviations away from that ideal 77 and 91 percent uh, is considered extreme. Uh, we're not so interested in putting them in categories. We're more interested in how much space do we need to gain to get that patient back to normal. Uh, and thankfully Invisalign simplified this. Unfortunately, Invisalign does a pretty poor job of explaining how, you know, how to use this information. Uh, you can go to their, their website and look at the uh, description for the Bolton analysis tool. Uh, either I'm not intelligent or this is way more complicated than it needs to be. Uh, nowhere in here does it explicitly say that the uh, distance or the space that is reported is the distance that is away from that 77%. So let me go back to this formula here. This was a pretty good presentation that I was able to watch. And this slide right here helped me to understand what they were doing <clears throat> or what they're reporting. If we don't have the denominator here and we have the numerator and we multiply by 100 and we say 77.2% is ideal, what is the number at the bottom that needs to be in order to achieve that? And then Invisalign software, the ClinCheck software, uh, gives you a difference of what that ideal number would be. 
Uh, maybe I'll do a, a video with the formula that they actually use to derive that number, uh, but it's pretty hard to conceptualize. But that's where that number comes from. It's a deviation of the upper or lower arch, depending on which one has the excess. And if we use that 77.2% for the interior ratio, what is the difference that the patient actually has to get there? Stated another way, if the patient had a perfect relationship, the Bolton analysis would say zero. So they always report it as a positive number because they're gonna report it as an excess of the arch that has the excessive two structure. Again, in relation to the 77%, which is an average of the population. Ah, I'm very, uh, very happy I finally got this. I just don't know if I'm portraying it well. So I would spend some time on this. Uh, basically what it comes down to is that's the amount of space on the lower that you need to remove or space you need to create on the upper in between the canine and canine to solve the problem of the arch discrepancy or the arch length discrepancy as defined by the, the two structure. Uh, oftentimes you'll find that the discrepancy uh, lessens as you go farther and farther back. But this particular treatment plan uh, was set up by another doctor and what he chose to do, rather than doing IPR on the lower, he created the space on the upper and will close that restoratively. If you ignore this and you always went with IPR, well, I don't know. I don't like doing IPR. I don't like retractive methods of orthodontics where we're decreasing the space for the tongue. Uh, but each clinician is going to have their own preference. But I think this is a really good tool for us to get a, a sense of how much space needs to be created, either by removing on one arch or adding on another, or combination of the two. I hope this, uh, this explanation of the Bolton analysis and its relation to ClinCheck helps. Uh, I will modify this in the future as I start to uh, understand it better myself and hopefully get that formula so that when you see this number, you know exactly where it's coming from. Thank you.